Hello and welcome to the Holistic Fitness Podcast, where you'll learn how to get your goals without burning out. I'm your host, Lori, and this show isn't just about movement and nutrition. You probably already know that exercise and nutrition is important for your mental and physical health and well-being. It's also about stress management, mindset, shedding some limiting beliefs, and working through your childhood trauma. Today, I'm joined by Margaret Stone. Margaret is the founder of Eat Smart, a food wellness coaching company aimed at helping people love their bodies by ditching their diets for good and reclaiming their health through clean eating. Eat Smart was born out of a decade-long journey of Margaret struggling with chronic health conditions like joint pain, acid reflux, chronic fatigue, and other ailments. After much trial and error, Margaret was able to resolve her health problems without medication through clean eating. Margaret is a testament to the healing power of eating simple whole foods while focusing on eliminating additives and toxins found in our food to help our bodies bring themselves in to heal naturally. I personally love following Margaret on the socials. I also really, really enjoyed this conversation. Some of the things we do chat about is making clean eating easy. So different tips for making small changes that will have really big positive impacts on your body. We also chat about common myths in the food industry that have (laughs) led people to believe that fat is bad, a narrative that was actually paid for by the sugar industry. We also talk about how you really can heal health problems by eliminating problematic foods instead of just taking a pill or being told that headaches are actually your normal and how to get off the diet train for good and lose weight while eating dessert. I definitely recommend you tune into this one if you want to learn how to get fit in a balanced way. How are you going today, Margaret? I'm doing so great. I'm really excited to be here. Thanks for having me on. I'm super excited to have you here as well. And for those of you listening to podcasts and not seeing this like on YouTube or on Instagram or wherever these end up, Margaret is in one of my favorite colors. She's wearing hot pink today. So where are you going? <laughs> Amazing. So I'm really excited to have you because you bring a really great lens of when it comes to like clean eating and myths in the food industry and like getting off that diet train while still enjoying your life. So I know that a lot of our listeners are going to be able to resonate with that. Question I always start off with though, Margaret, is like anyone that gets into fitness, nutrition, stress management, meditation, like helping people in a very specific way to kind of like make people happier and help people get their goals. There's always some sort of backstory. So can you tell me the context that I would need to know about your life to know why you help people in the way you do today? Yeah, absolutely. So like my personality is a fixer. And if I want something, I want it fixed and I want it done. So the backstory I would say would be if I'd have a health problem or whatever, I was the one who was always going to the doctor because I was told the doctor is going to fix it. Chronic headaches, you're tired, you're achy, you have your skin is messed up. You got to go to the doctor. You got to follow up. You got to be religious with it and they're going to fix it. Well, after a while, I'm realizing, you know, the doctor isn't making any changes positively. It's not helping. And little by little, I learned how the food that I was eating or the food that I changed, I think dairy was one of the first things I pulled out of my diet. And I'm like, oh my gosh, after a few weeks, I don't have joint pain anymore. So that is kind of how it started with me, where I was able to solve my own problems and have great solutions by tweaking the food that I was eating. And then obviously just in society, what does everybody talk about? Oh, I'm always so tired. Oh, I'm always, you know, I need a nap at the end of the day. Oh, you know, I have all these headaches and I, me being so solution focused, I'm like, it does not have to be this way. So that is how Eat Smart was born. I wanted to communicate how amazing I feel every day and share how people can feel amazing too without having to take pills, without having to kind of suffer through it. There's really an easy fix. I love that. And I love that you're such a fixer and you're so solution oriented and you're like, hey, why aren't I getting what I need from doctors and like, what do I need to do to kind of like learn and like Mm -hmm. trial on my own body and stuff like that? Can you dive a little bit more into what you do today? So, you know, with Eat Smart and how you help people. Yeah, absolutely. So um, a lot of the people that come to me for coaching, um, I do a 90-day coaching program, are wanting to get rid of their fatigue, 
they're wanting to lose weight. They've done all the diets. They've done the calorie counting. They've done the keto. They've Some of them have, have even been like vegetarians um, and they're just looking for something new and different. And I think a lot of the content that I put out there really piques people's interest because it makes you think differently than what kind of big media is telling you you should be eating or what is actually good for you, right? Mm. Um, so I help people in stages, right? Because we start small. Like it even just starts with swapping out your cooking oil to make a huge difference in the inflammation in your body, right? So swapping out some of your staples and then helping people still keep the things that they love, but do healthier versions, even packaged versions. There's even healthy, clean versions of packaged foods, different wow. chips, crackers, things like that. Um, and then of course the recipes, I'm obsessed with being able to eat everything and any, anything I want, but clean, Yes, so. I love that. I I mean, there's so much I can dive into, but I want to know what cooking oil I should be using. Tell me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Tell me, what do you need to swap out? <laughs> okay, so the easiest one I would say is avocado oil. So go to your grocery store and buy some avocado oil. It's best if it's in glass. Mm. Um, and then I always love to say, go to your big box like Costco or something like that because it's wildly cheaper and you can get a really big thing of it. But then also, you know, if you find that dairy doesn't bother you, there's nothing wrong with a grass-fed butter. But that's only mm. if you, you're able to distinguish, you know, that you're not really getting weighed down by the dairy with any kind of issues like drinking and stuff. Um, and then if you are eating a clean bacon, like a nitrate-free bacon, you can use bacon fat. You can use tallow. Duck fat is great. Wow. Um, and then not heating would be olive oil um, mm. if you're not heating it. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that olive oil actually goes rancid if you heat it, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> which it is creates, crazy. Yeah. And it creates those, those uh, cancer causing compounds. Mm. Um, yeah, I know. There's levels to it, right? So to go back to your earlier question, I try not to throw everything at somebody at once. Yeah, I'd rather yeah. you heat olive oil than be using canola oil. <laughs> sure. Yeah. It's all about um, like, what's the easiest thing that we can change that's going to create the maximum impact and maybe heating olive oil isn't that but stopping using vegetable oil is the thing um i use grapeseed oil from costco you okay, know cool. is is grapeseed oil okay or is avocado oil really the cream of the crop there so it's a seed oil right okay. so there's a lot of like uh, there can be a lot of manipulation involved in that and it can be kind of inflammatory because of the omega 6s right yeah um, but I mean, I, I go for, for avocado oil. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big fan of avocados. Got a mono, mono unsaturated fat. I'm also yeah. curious about, um, you, you cutting dairy, but then you also mm-hmm. mentioned that you're all about like people being able to eat whatever they want to eat, but just eating mm-hmm. clean. So can right. you explain your journey of like cutting out dairy, mm-hmm. why that helped and how, how you can eat anything today? Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about what milk is from a cow. Milk is coming from a cow who is raging with pregnancy hormones, right? Mm. And milk is meant to stimulate the growth of a baby cow. (laughs) So it's full of growth hormones. Yes. So even if you have a cow that's only eating grass, even if it's your own cow, it's not processed, any of that, it is still loaded with cow hormones. Mm. And when you're putting that in your body, it can create a ton of inflammation. And then obviously there's a ton of other issues when you're eating conventional dairy because they're adding certain types of hormones into all of that. And then the cows are eating grain, which is GMO. And then that's creating all kinds of issues with the milk that's produced. Um, So to kind of segue into when you were saying, if I'm not eating dairy, how do I sell you all the things I love? I'll give you an example. Um, And for people who aren't that familiar with like nuts and using soaked nuts blended to make different type of dairy alternatives, it may sound crazy, but it will blow your mind how good it is. So I'm actually in the (laughs) middle of making a batch of cashew cream cheese right now. Um, So you soak your cashews overnight is best in water. And then you blend them up with some lemon juice or apple cider vinegar. And then I love to throw an everything bagel seasoning in there to make your everything bagel cream cheese. If you have a high powered blender, it's going to blow you away. It's white, it's creamy. And then whatever you want to add in there, you want to do blueberry cream cheese, 
unbelievable. I always have a batch in my fridge. Um, so things like that. There's a lot of really amazing alternatives because I mean, who can give up cream cheese, right? Like nobody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah or cheese in general. Yeah. Now this kind of like layers. So I, I know that nuts have a lot of fat in it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, a lot of it's good fats like monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats. But, you know, if we're substituting with a lot of nuts, you know, obviously our fat, our fat kind of macronutrients are going to go up. Mm-hmm. So can you dive a little bit more into like what your thoughts are in terms of the macronutrient of fat and how much we should be having? So I am not, I don't direct my clients into measuring and doing things like that or focusing on macronutrients. But mm-hmm. what I do direct them to understand is how you know, the media has created a certain type of image about how fat is bad and we shouldn't be eating any fat and even how fat is tied to heart disease. Mm. So there's been a lot, a few peer-reviewed studies. So peer-reviewed studies are where people go and look at multiple studies that have been done on something and come to a conclusion where there really is no connection between cardiovascular disease and eating fat. Mm. Um, So... And I know that, and maybe you know this, the sugar industry really kind of drove that narrative about how fat was bad. Mm. Um, So they incentivized financially scientists from Harvard to downplay the negative effects of sugar, which we know sugar is, is, there are zero benefits to sugar, zero. Mm. Downplayed the the negative effects of sugar and increased the negative effects of, of fat in those studies. So that's pretty incredible when you think about it. Yeah, I remember when like the skinny phase was really big and um which by the way there's trends on our body types. That's absolutely wild, but let's it you know is, skinny yeah. skinny was the trend yeah. and it was fat free everything. And even though it's fat free, like if you look at the sugar content in these fat free yogurts, it was insane. It was Oh really yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, and you're yeah. just you're taxing your organs with all of that sugar. Are you tired of constantly feeling burnt out while trying to achieve your goals? Do you find yourself struggling to maintain motivation and productivity over long periods of time? I'd like to introduce you to the Goal Getting Journal, the ultimate solution for those of you who want to surpass their goals without burning out. Our journal is designed to help you set achievable goals, track your progress, and maintain a healthy work-life balance. With our journal, you'll discover practical strategies for managing stress, staying motivated, and avoiding burnout, including time blocking, habit stacking, and so much more. You'll also learn how to prioritize your tasks and maximize your productivity so you can get more done in less time. The Goal Getting Journal is perfect for anyone who wants to achieve their goals without sacrificing their mental health and well-being. Whether you're an entrepreneur, a student, or just someone who wants to make any positive change in your life, the Goal Getting Journal can help you stay on track and avoid burnout. And for Holistic Fitness Podcast listeners, you can get 20% off your first journal using the code HF podcast. Go to goalgettingjournal.com and type HF podcast at checkout to get your discount. So what are you waiting for? Order the Goal Getting Journal today and start getting your goals without burning out. Let's kind of go towards a diet though that is very much like reducing sugars, like the ketogenic Mm -hmm. diet. And yeah. you mentioned earlier that you, you've you helped people that have tried keto. You've helped people that have, you know, are maybe vegetarians and, and stuff like that. Um, and also help people that have tried calorie counting before. Do you see like any benefits or dangers? Like what are your kind of thoughts on these newer kind of no sugar diets? So I think my initial thought goes to when you're eliminating something and you're eating something that's packaged and you're, Mm -hmm. and they're marketing to you this elimination of sugar. A lot of times it's compensated in a different way, which might be worse. Right. So they're adding a lot of stevia. Um, I mean, stevia is really highly processed and stevia can really mess with your, um, your blood sugar levels, even because your body is tasting sweet even mm-hmm. though there's nothing there to actually burn, your body is still going through that process. Anyway, so to, to your question, I think that people need to be really cautious of when they are trying to limit one thing, that what they're replacing it with is not worse. 
Mm. You know, one of the reasons why I make my own cashew cream cheese is because a lot of the dairy-free cheeses have a ton of additives. Mm. And you're honestly almost better eating an organic milk cream cheese. Mm. You know? That makes total sense. It's like, and I saw this thing about, um, this fact about vegans, like, um, people go on vegan and vegetarian diets for multiple different reasons. Personally, I'm vegetarian. So nothing wrong with like that. Mm-hmm. But there was this fact that, fact that when people go on vegan diets, they actually increase their processed food, food, um, consumption by 20% mm-hmm. or something like that. And, you know, even though some people may be starting vegan or vegetarian or whatever to, mm-hmm. um, to be healthier, right. if you're increasing your processed food count, that kind of seems counterintuitive. Right. Right. Absolutely. I mean, and then you have to ask yourself, what are you really running from? You know, I don't know what's, and then if you can kind of focus on what, what the end goal is, maybe you can kind of readjust that, but it is crazy how the processed food is like, geez, how did we get here? Convenience. Yes, exactly. Speaking of though, something that I've noticed you've mentioned a few times, like with with regards to dairy and a little bit earlier as well, like with swapping out the cooking oil, you've Mm. used this word inflammation. So what is inflammation in our body and why do we need to reduce it? Yeah. So inflammation essentially is, is a response to a cascade of many things in your body essentially going wrong, for lack of a more clinical term. Inflammation doesn't happen when you have, you know, an ice cream with conventional dairy once. No. Mm. It's going to happen when your body has reached that tolerance, that threshold. And inflammation can happen from a lot of reasons. I mean, we can't go into all of them, but one of the things would be, I'm sure your listeners have heard of leaky gut, right? Leaky gut can really cause inflammation because the toxins in the food are able to pass through your gut and go into your body and then are able to create that inflammation that way. Inflammation like unquestionably leads to chronic disease. Your Mm. body is so focused on having to reverse the effects of what you're putting in it and fix that inflammation that it can't work on fixing cells that have kind of started to go haywire somewhere else and, and lead to a disease process. Wow. Can you explain to me like what chronic disease is? So from my perspective, and I'm not an MD, I'm also not an RD. (laughs) (laughs) But from my perspective, chronic disease is essentially the body is is lost its balance. Mm. To kind of break it down super simply, it's Mm. lost its balance and it's trying to compensate and fix it. And your symptom of disease Mm. is that attempt at fixing what has become out of balance where that homeostasis is gone. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. And I guess like the other symptom was really that inflammation in the first place. Um, But of course, there's Mm. plenty of studies where people can go um, research the different uh, risk factors for chronic disease for sure, because I am not a medical doctor either. Um, But from you know, a lot of what we're talking about is definitely like, I don't want to say food is fuel, but food is medicine in some sort Mm -hmm. of way. Or for you, what I'm hearing is it was your preventative medicine. So you didn't need to take pills at the doctor, at the doctors. Mm -hmm. Of course, your your doctor, what they say is most very important. And if you need pills, go for it. But in terms of the preventative side of things, what are a few small changes that people can live by to live their healthiest lives and maybe prevent unideal circumstances in the future? Yeah, I think it starts with recognizing and really being in touch with your body, right? So Mm. I'm getting a headache at this time every day. I'm really tired, like kind of start to get in touch with what your physical complaints are. And do you even know what it feels like to be in a healthy body, right? Because being Mm. tired every day is not, that's not normal. I think a lot of it too, maybe as people have shifted toward really focused on the hormones thing and, you know, that's all great. But I think you can even take a step back and say, you know, what am I putting in my body that's making my body fight me? So some simple things, you know, start with what you don't really care about. You know, Um, if you don't care that much, I mean, about dairy, go buy some clean nut milk and start there, you know, swap your dairy out. 
Um, certainly swap your seed oil out. That's an easy way to start too. Mm. Cutting, um, cutting the, the fresh, the pressed juices, because that's creating that blood sugar spike because there's no fiber. Mm. You take all the skins off of your berries and, and your fruit. And then that just rushes through your body so fast and it creates that spike. Mm. And then you're going to crash and be really tired. And it's a lot of sugar. In yes. That. Like pure sugar. Yeah. That makes total sense because I've done a couple of juice cleanses more so out of um, curiosity. And mm. I love fasting in general. Mm-hmm. I know it's not mm-hmm. for everyone, but my body mm-hmm. can handle it. Definitely yeah. when I did um, my meditation, like 10 day me- meditation course, we did a lot of fasting and I really uh. got benefits from it. But I didn't get benefits from juice fasts, only mm-hmm. water fasts. Those mm-hmm. juice fasts, I felt like I was on a um, emotional roller coaster. Yeah. I was so high and then wow. I was so low. But yeah. I usually have sustained energy and I'm like, why do I feel like absolute shit on these juice cleanses? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's crazy, right? That you can recognize that. And to your point about the fasting, when our body doesn't have stuff to process, even if it's clean food, we have time to repair. Yeah, for sure. Your organs have time to repair and to rest. That's the biggest reason I'm a vegetarian is that I feel so much less heavy. Now, yeah. I do like yeah. as a trainer, I'm very big on my protein intake. And I will mm-hmm. say that balancing out the protein versus carbs, because generally all my protein um, sources have a lot of carbs as well. That is a challenge. So I'm not saying mm-hmm. it's not challenging mm-hmm. in terms of getting all the nutrients you need. Right. But um just with regards to that rest of the gut and stuff like that, I yeah. um, definitely noticed a difference for me personally of um, eating no meat. Absolutely. And, you know, to that point, even if you're eating meat, if you're eating the wrong kind of meat that's fed the GMO stuff that's sprayed with the pesticides, that's even more your body has to process. Yes. Yeah. I tell you what, my mum and I were at a restaurant once. My mum's in Australia and um, it was like a real hipster restaurant. And I come from a pretty working class family. It was so funny. Yeah. Like it was just like grass fed Wagyu or like whatever it was, like grass fed beef. And mum goes, mm. what else would they bloody feed it? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. But that's funny, right? They don't yeah. always feed them grass. <laughs> yeah. Like it should be that way. Yeah. Funny. Can you tell me more about like <laughs> how our meat, like, because I would say most of the people listening to this podcast probably eat meat. So like Mm -hmm. how are most of our meats kind of like fed, processed, all that sort of stuff. And how do we start to look for meat that might be a little bit more beneficial for our body? Yeah, absolutely. You definitely want organic meat when you can. I mean, that should, you should almost, in my opinion, skip it if you can't get organic meat. Um, Mm. And then to the beef like piece, the grass fed that we were talking about, they're feeding them genetically modified corn um, and soy. And likely it's sprayed with glyphosate, which is that ingredient in Roundup, which is a toxic weed killer. Jeez. And I mean, I don't really think you need to be super smart to know that if some animal is eating something that's sprayed with a toxic chemical... They're eating it. It's creating the muscle. And then we're eating that muscle, essentially. I would imagine that it's coming to us in a bad way. Um, So a way to avoid that is you want to look for not only grass-fed, and grass-fed, granted, is better than not seeing grass-fed on the label because they'll feed them grass. But if you don't see and grass-finished, they are sending them to feed lots, is what they call them, to essentially feed them a shit ton of grain before they then go, you know, to sleep forever. Um, mm. So that is kind of how they, it be, it's become another marketing tactic. Yeah, it's grass fed. If it doesn't say finish, trust me, if they've finished them with grass, they're going to say finish. They want to say it. Right. But think about, I mean, and I don't know, you're probably not looking at meat labels, but maybe you've heard a lot mm. grass fed. If you're not seeing that finished, it's a bunch of corn at the end. Yeah, that's crazy. I think the biggest, objection that I get as a trainer when it comes to diet is but eating healthy is so expensive. Mm -hmm. I have some challenges to that, but I'm curious to hear your point of view of like when you're telling someone to start eating avocado oil, to start look for grass Mm -hmm. fed and finished, 
um, and providing these tips over time, like how do you help people um, work within their budgets while also yeah. eating things that are super nutritious? Yeah. So first, I just kind of want to challenge how everyone thinks that eating healthy is expensive because it's expensive based on what baseline. Mm. If you're living in an apartment that's $300 a month, but you have roaches, you're broken into and your roof is leaking every single day, you're not going to think that a $1,000 apartment that's perfectly safe and doesn't have bugs and doesn't leak is really expensive and too much to do because mm. you're, you're noticing the immediate benefit. So an example would be if you buy almond milk, that is the $2 almond milk, it literally has like almost a fraction of the vitamins and minerals in it because they're using two nuts in the milk and it's all water. Jeez. So you can literally look at the nutritional values, compare those labels on the six ninety nine one because you're literally getting three cups of almonds in that other almond milk. Mm. So it's more expensive because you're literally getting more food. That's one example with the milk, mm. right? And, you know, sure, um, avocado oil is more expensive, but, you know, you're going to pay the pharmacy or you're going to pay the farmer. So I think it's mm -hmm. about kind of relooking at what we're comparing it to to decide it's expensive. Mm. Um, and then, you know, I think using the big box retailers like Costco, I found has honestly a ton of really great clean options. Yes. You know, I mean, there was a while you couldn't find avocado oil anywhere. And now they're carrying it in the big drums. And I buy, you know, I can find cashews there that aren't in seed oils. Because a lot of times it's really hard to find nuts that aren't bathed in seed oil, by the way, mm -hmm. um, for a super cheap price. So I can make my cashew cream cheese for so cheap versus buying it. It can be seven, eight dollars right in the tub. And I can make mm. a ton of tabs for that same price. So there's different tips and tricks. And like I said earlier, I'm so solution focused and I get super excited whenever someone has an objection about something because I'm like, we're going to fix it. There's a yes. way to do it. <laughs> I love that. I would yeah. be also a proponent for Costco as well. A specific example is um, I did have a nutritionist and one of the things she got me on were hemp hearts to increase, mm -hmm. my, yes. to increase my protein count. And yeah. I went to Whole Foods. I bought like this packet of hemp hearts for like, $10. And then I went to Costco and saw a packet four times as big for $13. And I'm like, there is no way I would have thought that Costco could ha have hemp hearts. And yeah. Then isn't that crazy? <laughs> they have a lot of really great stuff. I found great quality coconut water. Coconut water is really hard to find without added sugar. It's almost impossible. Mm. Um, and it's so greatly priced. And I'm like, this is such a win. So I definitely have yes. that big box. Yeah. Yes. Um, I love that. We've spoken about lots of different things. We've spoken about seed oils, dairy, meat. Um, and I think like listening to a conversation, I always say compare yourself to somebody like one to three years ahead of you so that you don't get too overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. So when you're working with a client, you've got so many changes to make. What do you find are the biggest high impact immediate changes that people can make in general that's going to directly impact their health. Yeah, so there's two ways about two ways to go about that. If someone comes to me with certain really chronic physical complaints, I'm going to look at that and see what what might be really closely tied to that. Like I'm always having this joint pain, okay, immediately we need to try and cut all the dairy because that's yeah. going to immediately make that change in that negative physical symptom. Um but then I also think that looking at the daily routine because the daily routine typically, you know, if you're waking up every day and going, you know, to have, even if it's your artisan artisan breakfast sandwich with the cheese, with, you know, the conventional egg, with the inflammatory gluten bun or whatever, and you're feeling like crap, well, let's figure out how we can go into that and change that because you're, you're replicating that every single day. Um, and way to make a quick change. And I have an amazing freezer breakfast sandwich recipe. Wrap them in foil, pop them in the oven while you're getting in the shower and out the door you go. <laughs> you I love that. Sandwich. What are your yeah. thoughts then on gluten and, and wheat then? Because I know like a lot of folks that are in your space where they work with um, specific like chronic illnesses, they, they tend to recommend A, cut out dairy, but B, cut out gluten. So what are your kind of thoughts yeah. there? And what are your observations there? 
Yeah. So I always say it's not your grandmother's wheat. We're not eating the same wheat that it was a long time ago. It's been yes. manipulated and it's changed. And even if it hasn't been manipulated by man, just like the cross uh, breeding, I think that's probably the wrong term. <laughs> um, cr- I know what you mean though. It's yeah. like it's like how they they get two different plants. And my grandma would actually know the name of it because she's yeah. a master gardener. Yeah. But I, I can yeah. hardly make plants thrive at home. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So even just naturally over time, the way it's evolved, and then they strip down the wheat of all, like wheat has many layers, right? It looks mm. kind of like this, like the little wheat, little weedy thing. And there's like <laughs> outer shells. And that's where all kind of your nutrients are. And that also remembers what slows down the process of it going through your body and spiking your blood sugar. Mm. So they have essentially ripped off all the good stuff. And it's just the most refined, that's when you hear that term refined version, yes. like quick cooking oats are very refined. They're going to spike your blood sugar versus wow. a steel cut oat, right? Which takes a little bit longer for your body to break down. It has more nutrients. Um, so I definitely recommend cutting out the wheat unless there's like this new thing called heritage wheat and you can mm-hmm. get it from Italy and it comes whole in little whole pellets and you yes. can grind it yourself. And essentially that kind of a lot of times even people with Cialic disease and granted, you know, listen to your doctor. If you have Cialic disease, don't go off of what I'm saying. But I've heard (laughs) that people with Cialic disease that have had to cut out gluten or wheat can eat heritage wheat and not have symptoms. That's crazy. Because A, it's also not, not sprayed with glyphosate and it hasn't, hasn't been changed. There's new proteins in this wheat that affects our gut, even non-Cialic, even people without Cialic disease or IBS. Um, it creates an instant inflammatic response in the gut lining. We can see that. That's super interesting. And I would 10,000% believe that as well because I was raised in Australia. So like from elementary school and middle school and high school, I did in Australia and um, I am half American though. And since I've been here, I'm very... My stomach specifically and my digestive system is it very fussy about the mm. types of breads it gets. See, there you it, go, you know. Yeah, it can handle um, like a very good wood-fired pizza place. Like, mm. you know, when you go to one of those bougie wood-fired, like, I don't know, brewery and wood-fired mm-hmm. pizza type thing, can handle that. Um, it can handle like the Whole Foods bakery bread, but mm. it can't handle just like plain old bread or if you go to a cookout and have like sausage on bread or something like yeah. that, it goes straight through me. And because mm-hmm. I don't know what they spray on it over here or what it yeah. is, it, my body's just not used to it. And my digest, je, digestive system goes, nope, not today. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, you're lucky you have that movement to get it out as fast as possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it literally does. It feels mm. like hours after it's like, nope, yeah, not, not having nothing. a bar of this, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's funny though, all of these different things that we can kind of change. And it's cool to see your perspective on it as well and how you work with people there. Hey, Holistic Fitness fam, a quick message from one of our sponsors, Ned. As you all know, I recommend good nutrition, movement, and stress management practices before supplementing so you know what type of supplementation that your body actually needs. For me, I supplement with very few products, but Ned is one of them. I'm a type A, high energy, ambitious business girly with massive goals. And sometimes I honestly just need to chill out and relax a bit. I've found that both Ned's de-stress and sleep blends fit in with my busy lifestyle and ambitious goals, but I was honestly not a big fan of CBD products before trying Ned, mostly because of the culture surrounding weed. I just didn't want something that was going to alter my state of mind so that I became much less of a goal getter or less ambitious. That was until I learned about full spectrum hemp and their benefits. Ned blends a chock full of premium CBD and a full spectrum hemp of active cannabinoids. Ned's full spectrum hemp oil nourishes the body's endocannabinoid system to offer functional support for stress, sleep, inflammation, and balance. These products are science-backed, nature-based solutions that offer an alternative to prescription and over-the-counter drugs. All of Ned's full spectrum hemp oil is extracted from USDA certified organic hemp plants grown by an independent farmer named Jonathan in Colorado. 
I'm obviously a big fan, but don't take just my word for it. Ned CBD products have over 2,000 five-star reviews and they work with incredible partners in the medical field like Dr. Caroline Leaf, Dr. Christian Gonzalez and Dr. Will Cole. Ned is providing Holistic Fitness podcast listeners a very special discount. If you'd like to give Ned a try, listeners get 15% off Ned products with the code Lori Lee. L-O-R-I-L-E-E. Thanks, Ned, for sponsoring the show and offering a natural remedy to bring balance to so many people's well-being. What are your thoughts on caffeine? So you said something about like daily routines and I'm obviously big into listening to podcasts. If you listen to like Andrew Huberman's um, routine, he's big on like like not having caffeine for 90 minutes and then going outside. Mm. In, and getting that, you know, to get your cortisol spike. That's exactly like that. what I say. <laughs> Is it? Okay. Yeah. So tell me, tell yeah. me more about this daily routine people can do to kind of optimize their, their health and their day. Yeah. So the idea is when you first wake up, I mean, the first thing you should be doing is getting sunlight in your eyes without sunglasses and not through a window. It doesn't come to you the same way through glass. So even open a window, Mm. you want to do that. That's also going to help you to sleep better because it's setting that circadian rhythm. um, And it's telling your internal clock that it's time to wake up. And it's also going to regulate your hormones. So sit up for 15 Mm. minutes if you can. I know I take my laptop, my laptop out on my porch in the morning for at least 15 minutes. Granted, I'm looking at my screen right away, but you know, you got a balance. What can you do? Um, and then, yeah, you want to wait until your hormones are kind of coming up. That cortisol is reaching um, its top level because if you if you interject it with caffeine right away, your hormones haven't kind of come to their homeostasis for the beginning of the day yet, and it's going to kind of interrupt that cycle, and you're more likely to be tired later. Mm. Um, I know that I love coffee. Same. But I like, I'm kind of like a high anxiety person and I really work on that. And I know that coffee is just not good for someone who has that baseline, you know? So I do need to work on cutting it out. Yeah. I just love to grind my own beans and like do the pour over. (laughs) It just goes to show though, no matter where you are in your journey, we're always continuously refining and improving. So Mm -hmm. anyone listening to this and hearing like, oh, the bread I eat is not good. The dairy I eat is not good. I still have canola oil. And they're thinking I am Mm -hmm. like at base minus four. It's Mm -hmm. like, hey, it's just about like making one change and then making the next change. And eventually in five years time, you'll be like, hey, I wake up and drink kombucha and and run in the morning. And I used to think those people were psychos. (laughs) Yeah, 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 for real. Absolutely. And then um, as you do it, you become empowered because you notice the changes in your body and you want nothing else. You want to feel good every day. So you're like, this is worth it. For sure. I think my toxic trait with coffee is that I, I am a high energy person and I drink coffee like before I quote unquote should, like based on the evidence. And Mm. I have about three like filter coffees a day. And I know that that's technically too much, but I sleep for nine hours a night and I have sustained energy throughout the days. Mm. And I'm like, why is my body not tired even though I'm doing the thing that I know is not good for me? So I think that's my issue with changing my caffeine (laughs) routine. It's not like affecting me badly yet. (laughs) Yeah, well, that's good. That's good. Because it's not affecting you, yeah. Yeah, but I do know definitely at least removing that first coffee will be the the first thing to do. Yeah. (laughs) Can you tell me more about habits? So I think it's easy to kind of sit here and say, you know, um, make your own cashew butter at home, swap these out. Sugar has no health benefits, but actually implementing the habit of removing sugar or eating whole foods most of the time or, um, you know, making meals more often rather than getting mm-hmm. takeout, that habit change is tough. So what are your observations here to help people get off the diet train? Well, first I want to say it's a little bit about of a mindset shift. Everything yeah. is hard. Being overweight is hard. Being tired is hard. Going to the gym is hard. Having abs is hard. <laughs> you know, having joint pain is hard. Feeling feeling great is hard. Like everything is hard. You just kind of have to decide what you want your hard to be. You're difficult, right? You have to decide. Mm. You have to make a choice to commit. Yeah. You know, you have to tr- make a choice to commit to that. What lifestyle do you want? Um, but I mean, as far as like tips and tricks, 
I would say find like a natural grocer because Mm -hmm. that kind of can be a way where you can narrow down and granted, not everything packaged in there is going to be good for you, but that can kind of be a way that you can narrow down the riffraff of what you don't want to be choosing from and kind of, you know, start from there and start to swap out, you know, your, your power bar that has a bunch of sugar in it for something that has no added sugar. And the mm-hmm. longer you cut out sugar, the less you're going to want it and crave it. It literally creates an emotional roller coaster. It affects your mental health and you, you, you become desensitized to the taste of it. So you need more. Mm-hmm. And once you cut it out after a period of time, you won't need it as much. I would second you on that point completely, Margaret. Um, I was addicted to Coca-Cola until I was about 23. I'd have a can a day. Loved Coca-Cola. I um, recently, and by recently, I mean three years ago, had a full sugared Coke when I was in Bali. And I'm like, oh, I'll have a Coke, like see what it tastes like. Yeah. It was disgusting. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Because I did something like that recently too. I'm like, yeah, like I want that bubbles and like I just want yes. one. And I was like, oh, I can't even swallow it. <laughs> Yes. It was crazy. Like I actually prefer prefer a kombucha or Mm -hmm. like a sparkling water with a bit of fruit in it than I do um, Coke, which just seemed insane to me. Like if somebody told me when I was in my Coke phase, oh, just swap it out for sparkling water, I'd be like, ah, what are you nuts? Yeah, (laughs) are you crazy? Gross. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's crazy. And I love that notion of like choose your heart as well. Mm Yeah. Is is there any place for things like ice cream, chocolate brownies, like insert whatever your like emotional treat is in diets? So, I mean, my thing is my whole premise of making this program and even me living this way is I want to feel a certain way every day. Yeah. If I'm at a birthday party and there's like this fudge sundae that looks really good, there's a chance that I'm going to have some of it, right? Because it's kind of the moment, whatever. Um, But I don't want to continue that as a pattern because I know how it's going to make me feel. I know what it's going to do to my skin, my joint, my joints, things like that. Um, And then there are ways to make all that stuff clean. Um, Mm. I I have a recipe that I posted on my, the food blog um, for blueberry ice cream made with coconut milk coconut Mm. milk and coconut sugar. And it's fantastic. (laughs) Yes. So there's definitely ways to have all that. I mean, I use nut flowers to make um, chocolate cakes and things like that. And you can even make chocolate cakes without any of the flowers, right? Just like the ganache type cakes with the the cacao and stuff, the pure chocolate without the added sugar. And it's lovely. Like, Oh my goodness. (laughs) That's so great. So in that situation, would you just bring your own dessert? to a to a party so that you can I guess <laughs> pun intended have your cake and eat it too so everyone is different I know for me I'm gonna be like I'm not gonna bring my own stuff I'm just gonna I'm gonna have a piece of whatever they have there okay um just because you know that's the moment and you know I'm not going to a ton of birthday parties and doing it all the time um yeah so I don't know I mean what's your take on that what would you how would you kind of navigate that I guess you just kind of I would just eat it there, to be honest. Yeah, so like, I'm yeah. really big, like holistic fitness in general is mm-hmm. like being able to do what you enjoy, but figuring out when it's appropriate and right. analyzing the why behind it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like going to a birthday party or going to somebody's cookout isn't a regular event, as you mentioned. Mm-hmm. So having a couple of beers or like a right. seltzer or whatever it is, and then having a dessert, if that's like a once a month thing, cool. Yeah, it's when it's like every single, like maybe if you're in corporate and you entertain clients and you do Mm. it every time you entertain a client, that's Mm -hmm. a different story. Right. Yeah. Because then you're really going to notice that negative, negative response. But yeah. And the whole point, you know, too, the overarching thing is we want to keep things low stress. Stress creates inflammation in the body as well. (laughs) For sure. Yeah. Can you dive into like a few things that you've noticed cause stress that like, really um, contributes to habit change for clients? You're saying uh, working my system, the Eat Smart system, what makes that stressful for them? Yeah. So, oh no, not your system specifically. Um, like what in general makes causes, causes people stress to the point where it's difficult for them to implement new habits? 
Yeah, I think people get overwhelmed, kind of like you were mentioning earlier, and they they think they have to do it all at once. Or that naughty part of their brain comes in and says, it's too much, so I'm not going to do anything because there's no chance at making a change. So I'm not even going to do one thing. Mm. You know, like overeaters will say, I already had three pieces of cake, so I might as well have six. (laughs) Yes, isn't that weird? Yeah, just throw it all out. Like, you might as well just go for it now. You're already there. No. (laughs) Yes, I find that so interesting. Yeah. yeah, Well, because a lot of people even do that with fitness as well. And Mm -hmm. there must be a specific reason. It's I skipped my workout on Wednesday. So therefore, I'm not going to do all the rest of my workouts and try again on Monday. Yep. That's a cop out. I mean, the brain loves to do that. The brain loves to keep us in our comfortable space. So the brain is smart. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. And a previous podcast guest actually the the episode before this one that gets released when it gets released was talking about how the brain tricks us and how the brain just doesn't like change and mm-hmm. that's why it plays all these little tricks on it and she yeah. she actually told me about the specific chemicals and all, all that fun stuff which um I'll have to re-listen to it to remember but <laughs> yeah it's insane the different tricks our brains play on us to yeah. to keep us to keep keep them from change because tra- change is stressful. So right. whether it's positive or negative um, change, it's it's stressful to our body. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. We've spoken about a lot today, Margaret. Yeah. We've spoken about, you know, the food industry. We've spoken about gluten, dairy, seed oils, like natural grocers, all the things. Is there anything that we haven't spoken about that you really wanted to make sure that you shared today? <sighs> Um, I guess I'll just, you know, let everybody know about if they're looking to kind of even just dip their toe in the water of eating smart and helping to alleviate maybe some of their chronic physical issues or even wanting like less brain fog and just to feel better or even wanting to be able to see past like the marketing tactics and really be able to go into the grocery store and feel empowered. Um, I do like a, a free intro call where I help you to learn three specific things that you can implement for your specific situation right now um, to feel better and to alleviate some of your, your physical ailments or just kind of reach some of those goals. Um, and they can go to eatsmartcoaching.com for that and find that. And then I also do, it's a 90 day program. It's virtual. We do virtual sessions. I have a whole um, food blog with amazing clean recipes, hundreds of clean recipes for anything you could want. Um, And it's really tailored toward making sure that you don't feel deprived on your clean eating journey, but you can you can feel whole and well. Amazing. I love that. I'm definitely going to check out your blog as well after you mentioning like the coconut sugar recipes and stuff like that because I've got a Vitamix. So I know that I can create, like I've created lots of vegan ice cream from frozen bananas and stuff like that. Yes, the frozen bananas are awesome. Yeah, I'm really Mm -hmm. psyched to check out your blog. And that's actually my next question. Is there, um, are there any other places where we can all learn from you and um, get to know a little bit more of your work? Do you have like social links or something? Where can we all get in touch? Yeah, yeah. So the the cooking blog is eatsmartcooking.com. Um, and then you can find me on Instagram at eatsmartbewell um, and find me there. And then you can kind of see, like I talk in reels a little bit about some of the tricky marketing things that you might not know and um, kind of learn some tips and tricks there and follow me there. Yeah. Yay. I love that. Margaret, yeah. we do have a closing question on this podcast. And that closing question is, if you were sitting across the table from your 20 year old self right now, what yeah. one sentence of advice would you give her? So is this food related? Because honestly, what comes to my mind is stop eating dairy. It's literally making you feel like crap and you have no idea. <laughs> It's literally whatever comes up. Yeah, that so comes that's from, the first yeah. thing that came up. Then yeah, this there you poor go. girl, poor twenty-year-old girl, was just suffering, going through a gallon of milk a week. <laughs> oh my <laughs> goodness! I have never been a milk girly. Mm. I have never liked milk. Um, yeah. Like I definitely have it and stuff, but um, going through a gallon of milk a week is like something that um, I imagine like causes a lot of health problems for people. But maybe I just didn't experience it because I don't drink it. There you go. Seriously, seriously. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on the podcast, Margaret. Thank you so much for joining today. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's awesome to to chat with you. It was a pleasure. 
for sure. And for everyone at home, wherever you're listening to the Holistic Fitness Podcast, whether you're in the car, on a run, cleaning the house, whatever you're up to, eat well, move well, breathe well. And until next time, keep shining. Keep shining.